If you look for Amazon software engineering internship videos, you will find plenty of content, even more so when looking at FANG companies in general. But when it comes to machine learning internships, there's not that much that can help you with your preparation. Do I have to code? Do I have to work out crazy maths? And what machine learning questions do they actually ask? A few days ago, I had my very first interview for a machine learning intern position at a fan company, to be precise, for an applied scientist internship position at Amazon. So I want to share my experience, the type of questions they asked, and my regrets and tips how you can be better prepared. So I hope that this video can provide you the information to have a better feeling of what to expect. And with that said, let's just jump right into it. The whole interview took about one hour. And the first question that I was asked was to introduce myself. For that, I had three to five minutes. After that came the classic behavioral questions, which took about 10 to 15 minutes. Those are classic questions to assess whether you as a person are fit for the company and their values. They want to see if you have evidence of matching their values by discussing your past experiences. Amazon itself is there a bit more systematic when it comes to defining their values. They have 16 leadership principles, which they live and hire by. I will share several respective tips towards the end of this video, so stay tuned. But the two questions that I was asked were somewhere in the lines of tell me about a time where you had to remove a roadblock so that your team could progress in the project. And the second one was something like tell me about a time where you had to take over a task that wasn't originally part of your responsibility. I'm sure that if you have looked at the leadership principles, you can think for yourself which leadership principles those questions are associated with. Again, that took about 10 to 15 minutes. After that was done, we came to the final big block of questions regarding machine learning and data science. And that took about 25 to 30 minutes. In general, the questions were not that difficult. The goal was to assess my breadth of knowledge in machine learning and give concise answers to fairly simple questions. So I'll now just go ahead and read out the type of questions that I could remember in no particular global order. But let's say the first questions were a bit easier and it progressively got a tiny bit more complex. One of the first questions was what is classification and what types of models one can use for classification. So as simple as that. A further question was if I was familiar with PCA and straight away this perhaps is already a tip, say your level of knowledge about a certain area or a certain question. Right? I said I am familiar with PCA but I couldn't provide the mathematical objective function that is subject to optimization, right? I don't know the exact maths. And that was fine. He then said, yeah, that's, that's okay. Just explain the, on a high level how PCA works. And that was fine. Similarly, there was a question if I was familiar with logistic regression. And to be honest, I had a little blackout and I said something like, I, I used to know more about it. Um, but again, that was no big deal. We just pretty much skipped that question. Then there was a question for clustering. If I knew what clustering was, that was an easy answer. And then I was supposed to explain how the K nearest neighbors algorithm works. That was also no big deal. And then I was asked follow up questions on how you would define when to stop a training and how do you select the perfect amount of clusters. With K nearest neighbors, you have to define the amount of clusters you want to search for. Another follow-up question was to explain how to fit a Gaussian mixture model with expectation maximization. Also, no big deal. Of course, there also were questions on decision trees, how to construct a decision tree and how to train it on real valued outputs. And in that case, I again screwed up a tiny bit because I instantly jumped to a answer and I started talking about how to fit a classification model. And while explaining it, I realized that he asked for a real valued output, so a regression case, and I then got kind of lost and tried to revert and give the correct answer. But you know, first think, then talk. I'm already giving tips. Okay, whatever, so let's just continue. Further questions were something like, what is ensemble training? And what is boosting and what is bagging? Fairly obvious and easy to answer. Then, of course, I had to explain what overfitting is and how one can prevent overfitting or 
or at least try to prevent it. Simple question for regularization techniques and also questions about how to deal with unbalanced data sets. Finally, there are also some pretty straightforward questions like what is the L1 norm, what is the L2 norm, what is a discriminative model and what is a generative model and how would one compare different models and the performance of different models. And there also was a little follow-up question to that last question, how to compare the performance of different models. If I was familiar with the F1 score and terms like precision and recall. And I said that I wasn't familiar with those terms, but after googling them, I of course knew what they were, I just forgot the associated names of precision and recall and F1 score. So just a bit annoying. But that pretty much summarizes the whole range of questions that I was asked for machine learning and data science. And in the end, I had like five to 10 minutes to ask the interviewers themselves some questions. And that was the whole interview. So now let's talk about some regrets that I had and tips that I wish that I would have known before I took that interview. So the team that was interviewing me was a team working on time series forecasting and a team working with graph data. And I have experience working on such problems. That's pretty much what I do at my current job as a student researcher. And I just wish that I would have known beforehand that this is the team that is interviewing me. Because I believe that that is the reason that they took my application into consideration and invited me to a interview in the first place. So the tip is, Definitely write your recruiter and ask as many questions as you can. Ask beforehand what the team is that you are applying for and what the domain of expertise is that they are looking for. And when it comes to the behavioral questions, really prepare well for those. I was fairly good prepared. I had two st stories prepared that I could properly tell and I was happy with those in general. But I wish that I would have had one or two more stories that covered experience from my work position. That way I couldn't just answer the question and demonstrate my leadership skills, but I could also demonstrate my expertise in that certain domain that they potentially were actually looking for. So the tip is to definitely prepare two to four stories for the behavioral interview questions in the STAR format. Really look at the STAR format, it stands for Situation, Task, Action and Result. When designing those stories, really highlight the parts that correspond to the leadership principles and try to pack as many leadership principles into one story as you can. You don't need 16 stories, one for each leadership principle. In most cases, you can have one story that can demonstrate multiple of the 16 leadership principles. That said, also prepare or script out the tell me about yourself section and also prepare about three questions for the interviewer that you want to ask in the end. Because asking no questions in general is not that good of an impression to leave. And finally, I regret that I had so many silly and downright unnecessary errors. All of the questions that were asked were questions that I should be able to answer and I do know the answers to, or at least once knew the answers to. And I really emphasize this, look at your notes and prepare for those questions. They are really not that difficult. You just have to remember the things that you have once already learned. So the tip now is that if you have taken a machine learning one course at your university or by some online course, by the way, I have a video on great resources for machine learning, really look at your notes and try to remember everything that you have once already learned. In that case, you don't have to relearn everything from scratch, which will take some time, but you have already learned those things. You have already prepared for the exam and this is pretty much the same scenario. You just have to remember all the things that you have already learned and are somewhere hidden in the back of your mind. You have to know your decision trees. You have to know your L1, L2 norms. You have to know your loss functions, your clustering algorithms, just everything that I mentioned before in the questions section. And yeah, you just have to know your fundamentals. Again, especially for this internship interview, the questions aren't that difficult. You just have to remember all of those concepts that you have already learned. And if you don't know the answer to a question, definitely say you don't know the answer. Try to assess your level of confidence when the, when the question is asked. Do you know the answer on a higher level or do you downright just don't know the answer? 
tell that to the interviewer. That is much better than trying to figure out something on the go. Okay, that pretty much sums up everything. Pretty much all the questions that I was asked and the tips that I wish that I would have had before going to this interview. Now, I don't yet know if I've passed this interview or if I will be rejected. That means that I also don't know how many falsely or not answered questions are enough to still be accepted. But I really hope and also think that this video might be very valuable and the information might be very helpful for others. I also have a video where I prepared for the coding interview or the online assessment and I also talk about how much points are necessary to still pass. And if all of this information was really valuable to you, please don't forget to like this video, it helps me out a lot. And if you want to follow along and see how the journey continues of becoming a machine learning engineer, don't forget to subscribe. And with that said, thank you very very much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye!